everybody. Here we are, Ron and Hope, unfiltered, real raw relevant. I can't say it, so I'll let you do it. Can't say it fast. Do it. Try it. <clears throat> you can say it. You're just acting like you can't say it. Like I said, I can't, can't say it fast. <laughs> I just can't, can't, can't say it fast. In the last podcast, you said Denise is going to be here in the presence. Did I? Yeah. But I, you know what? I didn't call you out. I just let it go. But you just called me out. No, so I didn't call you out during, the during that time. She's going to be here in the presence very soon. Yes, though, isn't she, she is in the presence <laughs> of Jehovah. <laughs> <laughs> We're so glad you're here. If this is your very first time tuning in with us, it's going to be fun. It is. It's always fun. But you know what? Today we're going to talk about... Put the hook in the mouth. Put the hook in. We're going to talk about... Arguing. How to argue. Not arguing. Yes, arguing. How to argue. Because every one of us argues, right? Mm -mm. So how do you do it? How do you do it more... I'm not an arguer. Ron. I don't don't argue back. That's why you get so mad. No, no, no. Well, we're going to start an argument right here. I don't argue back. Because you don't argue because you... Just say how it is. It's, you you just try to be the dictator. No, I just listen to everybody. Oh, okay. Here I, we go. I take the high ground and I become a mediator. Hmm. And the and lightning. And the peacemaker. And the lightning. Jesus rod said, "Blessed are the peacemakers." Strike you. Blessed are the peacemakers. I come in peace. I don't you know what Ron no does when we're in a argument? What quote unquote argument? I grab your hand. Look at no, you. he turns it into a full-blown sermon. Yeah. I mean, he, I'm a teacher. He's trying to teach me. I'm like a we're in elementary school, I'm and a that teacher. kicks me off even more. Baby, I just want to be an instructor. That's all oh, I, I know be. you do. That's all I want to I, be. I know. We all know. So when we're in a disagreement, an argument, whatever, we gotta. He makes me sit down. No, she wants now to go to bed. Now you come sit down. She wants to go to bed. Child, I'm trying to tell her the Bible says, "Don't let the sun go down uh, on your wrath." Because if you go to bed mad, you wake up with a little stone in your heart. Yeah, you do. So you can't go to sleep on it. You got to stay up and take care of it. And that's when I hold your hand well, and tell really you. Well, really, what I'm trying to do is to walk away so that I don't throat punch you. Mm-hmm. You haven't throat punched me in a month or two, though. <laughs> Because you hadn't tried to instruct me in a month or two. <laughs> oh, it's so hard, isn't it? I mean, seriously, it, we're making fun and we're laughing and we're talking about our own things. But it is there hard. There's an art to arguing. There, there's an art to it. There's a way to do it. I try to abide by it. You know, when feelings get involved, when feelings get involved, logic and rationality they go out, out the, the window. Door. Yeah, they go out the door. <laughs> And so I just I just want to talk about the fact number one that arguing is real. That doesn't mean you're not a Christian. It doesn't mean you doesn't love G. It doesn't mean that that you don't love each other. I want to even. go all the way yeah. back to the beginning about compatibility and life rhythms, and then I would like Compality. to talk compatibility, compatibility and life rhythm, <laughs> compatibility. <laughs> see, see how healed I am. Compatibility. See how healed I am. It don't even bother me. Because true love cannot what be offended. What does that mean? True love cannot be offended. Let's see. Compality. O M P A L I T Y. Compality. What? That was so funny to me. But she's going to be here in the presence. <laughs> she's going to be here in the presence. I'm choking on my. <laughs> it's like you've been smoking. <laughs> Jesus, help me. You're giving away, baby. You've been oh, smoking cigarettes. Oh, Lord, I do not <laughs> smoke cigarettes. <laughs> oh, Ron, compatibility, or whatever you said. Go. Look, I really came here to be serious today. Right. And um, <laughs> I came here to be serious today. Go back to the, to attraction. Okay, tell them how much you <laughs> love me the first time you saw me. <laughs> <laughs> you went home and told your mom I could marry him. I did. And you had just seen me. You didn't know me. Because <laughs> you were so cute. You had long blonde hair down to here like a mullet. And my cheeks were red because I've been playing been basketball. Because you've been playing basketball. Yeah, you were so cute. And you went back and told mama what? 
I didn't just see you and say that, Ron. We talked. We we spent time together yeah, that weekend. You drove my car. I drove and your made car, my girlfriend and then you lied to me. me. So, but anyway, I still went back and told my mama that I had met somebody that I thought I could marry. She rolled her eyes and said I was crazy. Okay, based on what? Your presence. <laughs> based on. No, seriously. You were attracted. I was attracted okay. to you, but you were sweet too. You were so calm and sweet. I am sweet. You are sweet. Mm -hmm. And I had never met a guy who was just really calm and just kind and sweet. And I loved that about you. All right. Now you're getting serious, ain't you? Mm -hmm. Now you shifted on me. Yeah. All right. The law of attraction. We watch, well, Chaz loves these things he makes us watch. What's it on YouTube? Love is Blind, and what's this other one? There's another one. I don't one. know. He makes us watch all yeah, these things my second, with him. My second child, Chaz, he watches these things and then makes us sit down and watch it with him. And what of them they have to... Married at first sight. Married at first sight. That's married, what it was. You know, married by being put together by these clinicians and things. Mm -hmm. Then another one was Love is Blind. You got to fall in love and have somebody to marry you, and you've in been talking pod. through a wall. And I said, to try to prove that you don't have to be physically attracted. The fact is, it's a package. <clears throat> it's a pa it's not one or the other. Can I be emotionally connected and then I'm, am I, does that matter if I'm physically attracted? It's a package. I'm just telling you, I could not kiss somebody I wasn't attracted yeah, to. Yeah, I, I, that was very important to me, honestly, that you were beautiful. I'm just going to be very real. That's what made you stick out in the crowd to begin with. I didn't see your heart. I didn't see your spirit. I didn't know what your attitude was. I looked down there and saw you. You stuck out. You were prettier than everybody else in the building than me. And I Aww, went that night to find out where you baby. were. But I'm trying to say that's not unholy. You know, well, you shouldn't be attracted. To, yeah, as I was. I was attracted because I liked what I saw. However. It's all changed. There's got to be a, no, there's got to be a <laughs> second level. If people commit to each other, marry out of the law of attraction. Yeah. Just because you're attracted does not mean you're compatible. That's right. There's the what I call the law of compatibility. I have always said to those dating, <coughs> pardon me, those dating, uh, they say, how long should you date before you get married? I don't, there is no calendar answer. Right. There is, you should date, <coughs> pardon me, you should date long enough to see the person that uh, you love in several seasons. I, Hope's seen me when I've had a little money in my pocket. Hope's seen me when I didn't have anything. She's seen me. She's seen me after a great victory. She's seen me after I tasted defeat. She's seen me when I got a stomach virus. She's seen me when I was the picture of help. She saw me through all these different seasons long before yeah. we got married. Long before that. So what happens is there needs to be a time where you get to understand the other person's life rhythms. Attraction brings you together. I'm going to argue and just hang on. Attraction brings you together, but that's not the thing that seals the relationship. That relationship, if it's based on that, is, is destined for a short, hard fuse. It's going to be a buzz, it's going to be fiery, and then it's going to be over. Because gravity is real. Yeah, because when you have to live with somebody that is not fun to live with, they become unattractive very quickly. Yes. Okay? So you got, let, let me just get some hypotheticals. What do you mean life rhythm, uh, Ron? What are you talking about? Okay, you were raised in a home where you had a mom that stayed home and kept the house, kept it spick and span, cooked all the meals, had it on the table at 5.30 when daddy got home. You, She was over there overseeing you with your homework. Dad was the breadwinner. He took everybody to church on Sunday. You went on vacation July the 4th. You were raised in that kind of home. She was raised in a home where her dad left when she was two. Mama did work three jobs to put bread on the table. She was independent, had to learn how to keep a house at age eight. And it, yeah. And you come together and, and that, didn't like, respect that's, the man. That, like that's not good. Yeah. yeah, didn't respect at all. Heard her mama down in her daddy yeah. the whole, her whole life. And so you come in together and think that those issues are going to immediately be compatible. I'm going to tell you they're not. No. I don't care how attracted you are to each other. Right. You are going to have to work through those issues and bring it to a life rhythm. You're a night owl. She's a morning person. Okay. Uh, you know, Or like you, me, a 10 to 10 person. I mean, yeah, you... you Life rhythms. You go out to find those things out. Women are on cycles. Men are not. That's yeah, a, that's yeah a they are. That's a totally different they life They own rhythm. one. That's what I'm talking about. It's, it's go. It's, it's, it's 
men are always on the light switch called on, and and women are on their bodies are on Feel cycles. A little crock pot cycle. So, the fact is, all these things matter. One, you know, one is a Christian, one is not. Yeah. And th- these these are the things, the questions that you can be so head over heels. And then the arguing what you starts. Feel, yeah that you don't take the time mm-hmm. to work these things out. And they have to be worked out. So if they're not worked out prior, then after you get married, you're sentenced to them. Yeah. That's arguing. Yeah, strife. That's when Stripe the arguing is going to stop. Do yeah. we want to stop right here for a minute and recognize sure our sponsor? Sure can. I just want to uh, give a big shout out to Chime. I love We're Chime. We're grateful for our sponsors. Yes, we really, we are. really are grateful. And so many people are grateful for Chime too because Chime is an award-winning mobile it's crazy. app it's crazy. Um, that has a checking account, a debit card, and an optional savings account where it allows you to get your paycheck up to two days early. That's crazy. I know. It's like, I don't understand all of these apps and how they they work and technology, but they they do. do. And so getting your paycheck for some people two days early, I mean, that's That's huge. That's huge. That's That's a make or break. That helps you get on top of your bills, not miss your bills. So what are you waiting for? Hopefully it's not your paycheck, right? right? Uh, So get started with Chime today. You can apply uh, for a free account. It only takes a few minutes, literally, I promise you. So get started today, chime.com slash Ron and Hope. That's chime.com slash Ron and Hope. Bank services and debit cards are provided by the Bancorp Bank or Stride Bank. NA members FDIC. Early access to deposit funds depends on okay. the pay. Yes. So we're grateful to you, Chime, and we want all of you to check it out. That can really be a blessing. Get your for money. For those of you who are in a season of trying to make this paycheck period meet up to the next one, it can really help you out. Yes. Let me get back. When life rhythms have been paid basically no attention because we just The hormones are nuts. Or you get married, just something like this, and you learn how different you really are. Yep. And you are. Your likes and your dislikes. Let me let me let me take a minute and deal with that because I want to get to arguing, but I'm trying to to set up how do we get there. God pulled Adam out of the dirt. And that was the last time God ever reached into the dirt. Mm -hmm. Everything else came out of Adam. Yeah. Everything. Eve came out of Adam. Mm -hmm. So when God took Eve out of Adam, she he called Adam woe man, which means woman with a womb. I mean, man, man with, a, with womb. a womb. Man with a womb. So in other words, he took that part out of Adam, which goes on to say God may have created Adam in his own likeness, which God needs nothing outside of to him reproduce. to reproduce yeah. or procreate. So he may have made Adam in that same way, said it's not good that man be all one one, alone, all one. So he took womb man out of it. And so what does that mean, baby doll? That means women, women, this is going to fire some people up. Uh I don't know that it was designed for women to be able to do everything a man can do. You're designed to do everything I can't do. That's right. We complement each other. You're designed. I mean, can you do things wrong? Can do? Of course you can. You can preach. You can lead. You can administrate. You can do all those things just like I do them. But the fact is, you have some things you can do. Ron will never be able to do right. because God took that part different. out of me. Yeah. So give me you, I give you me, and together we're whole. Yeah. A lot of people say you need to be whole before you get... That is true. You need to be whole emotionally. He, yes, you need to be healed emotionally. But at the same time, you can find a counterpart that completes you in a mighty way because yeah. nobody by themselves has all the equipment. No. Nobody. And so that's what this great compliment, and the Bible calls it a mystery, the yeah. mystery of marriage is. So we get into this place where you have what I don't, I have things that you don't, But the fact is, where we should see that as complimenting one another, most of the time it can be a place of contention. Yes. Now, I told Hope, I said, I got the principles. I want to get them out. I'll just let her do the commentary. Number one, contention is not always a bad thing. No, not always. Contention is an indicator. Change is necessary. necessary. 
Contention is an indicator. Change is necessary. If I have something continuously con- contentious in my ministry, I need to make a change. Yeah, we got to examine it. I need to examine it, and there's something I got to make a change. There's something contentious in my house. I've got to make a change. Contention is the blinking light on your dashboard that says check engine soon. Right. Okay? In other words, if you don't pay attention to it right the first time you see it, it's not going to put you on the side of the road. But if you keep driving that car yeah. and pay that that indicator no uh, attention, sooner or later the car's going to leave you on the side of the road because right. it's going to break down. If if there's contention, it don't mean there's a devil in the house. It don't mean there's something you got to cast out. It means there is a change that is necessary to rectify the contentious right. area. So areas of contention. Uh, I wanted you to stay up late at night with me. You 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 tried out of love. You tried, but you look over there. You'd be like, Half a, yeah. I mean, you you know, a drugged person. Uh, yeah, and you would you know sometimes go to sleep with head and and I learned as time went on, let you put your head in my lap. I'd sit there and play with your. Head. I wanted you to stay awake, but I just realized. You know, un- unless you're fiercely excited about something or on a trip or so, the fact is, on day by day, week by week basis, you don't want to stay up as late as I do. No. It started out as a contention, but we brought it to a place of compromise. Another area of contention. What was it? I would trade cars all the time. Yeah, you did. Because I got you bored do. easy. I got bored easy. You did. You you do. You do. You still yep. do. I tell her, I say, I don't golf, I don't really hunt, I don't fish, I don't do all these things. I'm like, about every 12 to 24 and months, you know, I love It, it would just sheer <laughs> aggravate me so bad. And and then I had to examine my own heart. Like, why am I so aggravated? It's not costing us anything. I mean, he usually would never even money. put money down on a car. You know, it, he would keep it the same I payment. Worked the deal. I worked the deal. I, and, and I finally was like, you know what? Why am I so upset about this? Who cares if it's not costing us any money? And if it's the same payment, the, go trade your car. Let's, let's do real talk. The contention of in-laws. Yeah. You, your mom and dad vehemently did not want you to marry me. And so in many years... After we got married, I always told you when we'd go to your parents' house for Christmas, Thanksgiving, you changed. Yeah. Because I, 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 I was trying to be that mediator. Please, parents, please Because they run. would pit please you against par- me. Yeah. And they, would, they You were the centerpiece. Mm-hmm. And they would play you against me. And that was always a point of contention. We'd go there and we'd argue all the way back home. All the way. And then my I would end up sick from anxiety of trying just to manage... The conflict. The conflict between the two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you got put in the middle rough of it. T- Couple more. Days. I just want people to know we're real. We're not mad. What about sex? Oh, man. Uh, we never, I don't know that we've ever fought. I think men pout. You think? I don't think men men fight. I think men pout because they take it personal and see it as a sign of rejection. But then I had to start learning about a woman. There are just certain times that a woman is much more prone to sexual activity than she is others. And the fact is, I'm not built that way. And right. I had to come to, understanding always brings grace. Remember yeah. that teaching? Yeah. When you try to understand the thing, grace will begin to yeah. follow it. One more, one more place of contention. You're not going to hurt Child my Child rearing. You don't like when I cough at night. Oh, gosh. Here you don't we go. like I- when I smack my food. <laughs> you don't like my driving. She hollers the whole time I'm driving. She don't like my driving. I'm trying to think of others. I thought we weren't going to talk. Look, you said one more, and look, you're talking about all the things we look, argue about. Look, but my drip makes up for oh it, my doesn't God. it. Doesn't it? Babe. I have to have maintenance they may not, following they me may, around on it. I have to have maintenance. <laughs> they don't know what drip is. <laughs> What's drip, Ron? Style. <laughs> His style <laughs> makes up. For coughing. the coughing at night and waking me up. <laughs> Y'all don't know. It makes me so angry. Okay, she snores. And she's <laughs> determined to sleep on her back. She turns on her side. I only she sleeps snore like a book, on my back. But she rolls back over and puts her hands above her head. And then it's like she snores like somebody's chasing her. <laughs> Well, you cough like you live with coronavirus. I've never heard a human cough 
as much as you cough Baby, in my it whole reflux. life. It was reflux. No, I don't even want to hear it. The doctor told you it was not sinus. It is now. Re- you need to have. You it need is to be now gracious. a habit. You need to be gracious in my battle. It is not a battle. It's funny to me. You'll <laughs> tell don't cough in the den, but you come in the bedroom at you twelve and down. one o'clock at night. <laughs> but you lay down. But you lay down. I mean, and I'm like, you're exaggerating. Jesus. It's more like this, <clears throat> Ron. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. We're supposed to be talking about how to argue. Well, we do it. Okay. Here's, here's And then once he calms down with the arguing, we okay, we settle down. Then this is what he'll do. Then you want to make up. I just no, about no I don't. What? And I, I'm laying over there like, oh, God, touch him. Please heal him. And then he's calmed down 10, 15 minutes. Lights are out. Then I feel this hand. Wanting to rub, pat, and rub. I'm like, I just so, got back to sleep. It's so sweet. Well, I want to just kiss your eye before you go to sleep. Mm. Pat you. Isn't that so sweet? It's so sweet. How do you argue? An annoying. How do you argue? I got my notes. Let's talk Number about one, it. stick. To, to the, the topic. Issue. Yes, stick to the topic. Stick to the issue. What is the issue? What is the trigger? If you're talking about they spent too much money, don't go back and start talking about her mama. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you start <laughs> off talking about you always leave the toilet seat up and then all of a sudden... You know your in-laws are in it, and what yeah. what your what cousin you did cousin and did at Christmas and ninety two and and all this stuff, and it and just goes hard. All, it just goes all over the place. That's hard because your emotions you get <laughs> angry, and if you feel like you're pressed in a corner and you and you feel like you're not being heard, you get louder. So you just start going all over the place. That's hard to stick to the topic. Sticking to the issue, yeah, is I would say. I, Honestly, I got it listed as number one because you can't fix the issue if you're screaming about everything yeah. but it. And if you're too emotional yeah. to talk calmly about the issue, separate till the emotions wear off and you but summer But I try down. to do that. I you try to walk out the do. door. I used to when I was <laughs> in my 20s. I would try to, to fix it all right there, but I've learned now maybe I need my space, maybe you need your space. But we're being silly. You know what? We don't argue a lot. No, Lord, no, we don't. We don't argue a lot. But if we do, and I try, and I'm so angry, and I want to walk away, you get mad at me and say, Hope, now come back in here. No, you have you, you do your one-liner and walk out. Yeah, I do. You do the blowout, and then you walk away, and I don't get to respond. And so, and you're better at that. I am. Because we learn how to, I mean, Finally. We've, been, we've been together 30 something years. I mean, we need to learn how to do this. Right. So sticking to the issue, you're not going to be, you're not going to be able to do this at an emotional frenzy. No. So whatever you need to do, some people, for instance, let me, let me put it, put it this way. I remember our kids were tough and everybody's like, duh, everybody's kids are tough. I guess so. But I didn't raise your kids. The only kids I yeah. know is mine. And our kids were tough, and we had them boom, 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 because Hope just pursued me <laughs> like that and would not leave me alone. And so we had kids back to back to oh. back, and they were all small, and they were all small at one time, and they were high. Two of them were high, very high strung. And uh, I like remember, you. I remember coming home, literally coming home, and driving up in the driveway, and Hope hand me a baby and pass right by me get in the car and drive off down the road. Why? She is done. Yep, had it. She is done. And you know, I didn't even took my coat off. Still got my tie like, I mean, and, but she is done. And I had to learn, I had not been shut up in that, in that house with them kids all day long and two of them with a stomach virus no. and one of them with diarrhea. No, and, you got to leave. And, yeah, and, and, I, and you got to go you know, out and have a lunch with yep. somebody. And I was in, you I know, didn't. I was living the good life, having meetings all yes. day and fixing problems. Um, so anyway, I'm out doing that. I come home. But what did I learn out of that? I learned, you know what? If I just give her some time, yeah. you know, you just you just needed to get away from it. And sometimes you would always tell me, I'm like, I'd call you later, baby. You all right. You know, you didn't even speak when you came out. And you're like, I'm at Target. I'm just over here in the corner sniffing candles. <laughs> you know. <laughs> 
huffing paint. But it was just, I have, no, what'd you have to do? If if I don't go and process this, I'm gonna blow up on Ron. That's so true. I'm gonna blow up on the kids. And some of that was out of respect. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I'm, I may be putting words in your mouth, but you would come home and you're like, you know what? He's gonna catch it if I don't leave. Yeah. Not, because not I had done already, anything. no, you had not done a thing, but I had <clears throat> created in my mind how mad I was at you that you just, I, I'm, I would always say, how is it that they just get to get up and leave mm-hmm. and they go to work and they just go do their thing and get it's to go out to. Because it's called paying the bills. Right. Baby. Right. Yeah. But at that time, I didn't have a choice. I had to stay home because right. we couldn't afford but child you care. you kept wanting to have them babies. Oh, my Lord. Here we you go. You kept wanting to yes, have them Yes, I did. Babies. And I love every one of them. You want to have them babies. And I remember it. I remember it. And I was like, I was like, okay, sweetheart. Let's have another one. Mm-hmm. You want to have another one? I told you when we, when we, you remember when we were first flying out the West Coast and the wheels hit the ground? Yeah. And you said, let's I, try for another one. I said, let's try one. for one more. I think you hit me. I was 49 years old. And I said, Right no. when we got to California, I said, let's try for one more. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> so anyway. You know what? Let me, this, I just remembered this. And you were talking about, you know, emotions going crazy when you're arguing. And if you're married to that person, or if that is you, where you just lose your mind and you're screaming and yelling and the volume's so loud. We had a friend who said that they struggled with that and they screamed and hollered and and their kids would hear them and it just got crazy, said that now they have a rule. I'm talking about they just knew they couldn't control themselves, but it was a rule that it was almost like the game strip poker. Whoever started getting loud had to take off a piece of clothes. And the next one had to take off a piece of clothes to where they were standing there yelling or doing the, they're arguing, naked. but naked. And they could, but they would, got laughing and it they became never so continue. funny they couldn't continue, that yeah. it just helped them. And it really helped bring some joy and laughter into the right. to the room. And so, Ron, do you want to implement that? Tonight. <laughs> I'll start an argument. <laughs> I'm going to find Jesus. something. I'm going to find something to start an argument. <laughs> and I go, a bad one. <laughs> Make me real loud. Yeah. That is so funny. So anyway, sticking to the issue number two. We've Take lost, your clothes off. We've lost, well, yeah, we've lost this in our world. And I don't know who can model this for our young adults and our young married couples because it's not modeled by our adults. It's not modeled in politics. It's not modeled in corporate. And it's not really even modeled in church. Negotiate. Mm. Can I tell you something? Nobody comes to the table to get all of the chips in their corner. No, it's not reasonable. That you can't you can't enter an argument where it's all or, nothing. or it's nothing. Yeah, that's that's no fun to be in an argument with somebody who has the end, with all the cards are going to be on my side when this thing yeah. is over. In other words, an argument the goal of it is not to win, the goal of it is a solution. Yeah, and some people just want to win the argument. Right. I was louder than you, or I cut you harder, or mm-hmm. I shut you up, didn't mm-hmm. I? Mean, they don't want to win. Pride. But the goal of an argument is because there's contention, yeah. and let's take this to let's a place of this. solution. Yeah. yeah. So I know a lot of times it can be re- easy about money, especially in the times when things are so lean. And, and I remember, we would sit down, and it would, it would be hot, you know, with this, or that, why, what, what? And then we would sit down and negotiate things out. Well, we're going to do this with this. We're going to pull out this hole with this right here. And when I do this, we'll appropriate this here. And what it was was it's trying to find a solution instead of ripping each other's head right. off. Right. I remember when we first got married, though, you, <coughs> you leaned more that way. Not the I got to win, but yours was because you were raised in that. I was scared. That ho- <laughs> I was scared. You were Stop. I was scared. Just we didn't stop. have much money. Ron, it ain't about money. I'm talking about how you approached every disagreement. Your thoughts. Oh, oh okay. Yes. I thought you were going somewhere else. No, so your thoughts were because I'm the man of the house. I, you have to come my way. And I remember uh, several years into the the marriage, I would I looked at you and said, Ron, why can't we just agree to disagree? 
Why, why isn't it okay that at this time you think this way and I think this way? And I remember you'd bring in scripture. You'd say, well, you can't walk together unless you agree. And I'm like, but I don't agree with you on this one. And can you not respect my point of view and I'll respect your point of view? And, the, and now we're at a solution. You know, we had to, that was negotiating in our relationship mm -hmm. that at every single time, you may not come to an agreement, but you still love each other. The, the argument is settled. I respect your beliefs. You respect mine. And then we move forward. Don't let the argument destroy the relationship. No. It's not worth it. There is no argument. There is no disagreement worth that. But I, I just think, I think you said the word pride. It can be ego. It can be a whole lot of things. But when you sit there and say, all right, I can tell a fuss is about to start here. All right, let's talk about this and let's try to bring it to a place of solution. The art of communication, I think me and you have told each other so many times, one of the things that has blown us away in pastoring is people's inability to resolve it's a awful. conflict. It's awful. I cannot believe how much I have to get involved in with adults, grown adults. With grown adults in coming to resolve a conflict because they have no ability to resolve it on their own. Yeah. So you gotta come in as a peacemaker. And uh, so there's ways you can get books, you can get YouTubes and things and learn how to argue, yeah. learn how to negotiate. Cause I'm just hitting broad principles. Stick to the issue, negotiate, and before we run out of our time, the solution will normally, I would say 90% of the time or better, you're gonna have to come to a place of compromise. Yeah. <laughs> a place of compromise. Like staying up. I have no longer do I no longer do I have an expectation you step till twelve thirty one o'clock when we're at home. But if I take you on a trip, I've noticed mm -hmm. you'll stay up and won't say anything about it. And we talk and we have a great time and we go out and sit on the deck and because look at the beach. Because it's not a normal <laughs> it's not a normal day or a normal week because I don't have to get up the next morning and get ready but what to is go that? to work. That, that that right there is compromise. Yeah. You know, Ron, get me out of my. Get me out of my grind. Yeah. Get me out of my space. And you've told me that. Take take me to another environment. And so that's one of the things I invest in. I tell people we, we used, because we had so little, we used to invest in things. Yeah. But now we invest in experiences. Right. Uh, I'd, I'd rather have an experience than I would have stuff. And so in those experiences, you're like, get me out of this and get me in another atmosphere. And, you know, then I'm able I'm able to stay up. I'm able to do things. I'm able to enjoy it. And but sometimes it, you'll go to bed early with me. I have been doing that. It's been more lately as yeah. I've gotten a little older. And you'll say, you're going to come to bed with me? And I'll surprise you. I'll say, yep. And look, I'm and to him, to he's like, I'm going to come to bed early tonight. I'm coming at 11. 11 That to is me, early yeah. to Ron Carpenter. Sometimes I'm eating dinner at 10. So, yeah, that, that's, that is early for me. The I art. want them to be in a mild coma by 11. And 11 is early to him. We are so different in that. That happened to me. Number one, my daddy was like that. Yeah. So I don't know if it's in the genes or what. My dad, and it wasn't a good habit. My dad never slept. It just seemed like he just never did. And uh, But then I remember college. I just remember in that dorm. It Getting was just, in a cycle of staying chaos. up. I mean, it didn't even get quiet till like two o'clock in the morning. But I even went to bed early in college. See, I did. I, I would never close my bed. door and lock it. You so remember nobody how often I used in. to get sick? I really look back and yeah. I believe it's because of no sleep. I got sick all the time in college. And my mom and dad said <laughs> when I was even a little girl, a toddler, they said no matter where I was, if I was at church, if I was in the back seat, if I was sitting in the den, they said eight o'clock, they would look over and I was asleep wherever I was. Yep. So since a child, I have required more sleep. Yep. And it was a, it wasn't a life rhythm that we shared, but the art of compromise. Yeah, it was a point of contention. Has us understand each other. But yep. something that little, going to bed, the time of bed was huge. I mean, it was a big point of contention point for of us. Point of contention was money. Yeah. Because y'all weren't rich. No. But y'all, y'all did well. You know, For our town. You did well. Um, your family in a small town, y'all were at the, probably the top of the food chain. And so that was what you operated out of. We never, we never, we just never had anything. 
And so I remember I was probably overboard. If you would spend over a certain amount, like on groceries, I would freak out because that made me nervous because I knew I didn't have much money. And I knew I had no other means or stream for it to come in. And so I was always anxious about that and probably overbearing about that. And you probably had to dial it back a little bit because I remember 30 years ago, $38 shampoo. Ron, not me. Look, not not me. Look, Vavoom. It's not me. It look, it's so traumatized me, I remember. Okay? It's not me. It was black with a pink <laughs> label. Vavoom. Remember mm-hmm. that? And I was like, why do we have to have shampoo that costs more than a tank of gas? I, oh, I didn't my understand word. that. I it's, didn't do it. It was my mama. Blame it on her. No, is that perm? You need a special shampoo for that perm. I did. I <laughs> did. Because you had permed and bleached it. I did. Yeah. I loved it, though. I loved your curls like that, and I loved your blonde hair. Yeah. When you argue, stick to the issue. Don't bring everybody's mom and daddy into it. Number two, learn to negotiate. Number three, Solution 90% of the time is going to end in some type of compromise. If both of you are the kind that you have to win, you're going to argue all the yeah. time. You're never going to reach a solution. And if I can't live like that. And if you're loud and scream and yell and take off. your clothes off. I, I turned 54 in a few weeks. We're going to implement that tonight, yes. starting tonight. We're going to implement that starting tonight. That's hilarious. I'm going to find something and just go off on it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> We're about out of time. It. Anything you want to add? Because I've probably done most of the talking on this one. You ready to argue? Let's go home and argue. Okay. Yeah. Thank y'all <laughs> for being with us. Listen, if you like this, if you love our podcast, like it, share it. Please go, do. Go Please follow do. us on uh, YouTube. Uh, subscribe to our channels. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, Facebook, all these places. Mm. We love you guys. We'll see you you next time. Bye bye.